Welcome to the ASCAR Group's Cognitive Aid Companion videos. In these short minutes, we hope to give you all you need to interpret a rotum. We acknowledge this is a complex topic and the information here is no doubt a pragmatic condensation of the science. However, we also acknowledge the busy demands on all our lives and it is with this lens that we set out to distill these topics with a truly clinical and crisis mindset. We hope this mission resonates with you as senior clinicians and of course encourage you to look into this topic in more depth to develop your expertise. Our disclaimer can be found on our website www.ascargroup.com If you like this video or our work, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Your support truly goes a long way in helping us bring more effective anaesthetic crisis education. So firstly, where does our rotor aid fit in? Well, this cognitive aid is designed for hemostatic resuscitation in the bleeding adult patient who is not systemically anticoagulated with heparin. This could be trauma patients, bleeding non-cardiac surgery patients, and obstetric patients. What else does this aid assume? The first assumption this cognitive aid makes is that the patient is bleeding. This is important because, as always, we treat the patient and not the number. As you can see, our cognitive aid also suggests a role for the empiric administration of tranexamic acid in the bleeding patient. This will be a suitable, low-risk adjunct in most of our bleeding patients, helping to ensure we are treating a potentially hyperfibrinolytic system early on. Guidelines would also recommend supplementing the bolus dose of 1 gram of TXA with an infusion of 1 gram over 8 hours. So, with this in mind, the remainder of our algorithm is broken down into three simple steps. Be mindful of the following rules. 1. Each step must be followed in chronological order. 2. Progression should only be made when the clotting parameter in each step is rectified. 3. If an intervention is made, Recheck the rotum. One rotum begets another. Step 1. Check your FibTem A5. This is the amplitude of your clot at 5 minutes and checks whether enough fibrinogen is available for the propagation phase. The FibTem assay isolates fibrinogen function by using a platelet inhibitor. Remember, fibrinogen deficiency develops earlier than other deficiencies of coagulation factors. If it is under 10 millimeters, Many guidelines would recommend 10 to 20 units of cryoprecipitate. As a general rule, 5 units of cryo would be expected to raise the FibTem A5 by 2 mm. Step 2. Once your FibTem A5 is normal, that is above 10 mm, look at the A5 on the XTEM, that is, the amplitude of the clot on the XTEM assay at 5 minutes. Remember, the XTEM A5 does not isolate fibrinogen function, and hence, with a normal FibTEM A5, the XTEM assay will tell you about a deficiency of platelets in the propagation phase. Here, our threshold is 35 mm, so if the XTEM A5 is less than 35, give a pool of platelets and recheck your rotum. Step 3. Once your FibTEM A5 and XTEM A5 have been corrected, we can move on to looking at our XTEM clotting time, how long it takes for our clot to start to form, the initiation part of our system. A long XTEM CT of over 90 seconds indicates a deficiency in clotting factors. If this is the case, guidelines would suggest 4 units of FFP, and some institutions would support a modest dose of prothrombinex, for example, 10 units per kilogram. Importantly, in the event of refractory bleeding, higher thresholds should be targeted, and these are listed in brackets. At this point, it is important to remember that if your rotum trace is adopting the shape of an inverted martini glass, or the lysis index is over 7.5%, you may need another dose of tranexamic acid. It's also worth remembering that guidelines advocate for a second dose of 1 gram of TXA if bleeding continues after 30 minutes in major obstetric hemorrhage. Rotum is one part of the management of the bleeding patient. 
Remember the other pillars of anaesthetic management. Warming the patient, ventilating the acidosis, correcting the calcium, and redosing antibiotics. And lastly, if they are still bleeding, ask yourself, is additional expertise needed? Could this be surgical bleeding? Discuss and give thought to the appropriateness of adjuncts like Factor 7. It is extreme, but this may be that extreme case. DDAVP. It may be appropriate, particularly for uremic patients. Thank you so much for listening. We welcome your feedback.